Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to be talking about the ideal or universal gas law, which is PV equals nRT. And this is the next step after talking about the combined gas law. So let's remember the combined gas law was one law that was talking about a fixed amount of a gas, so we were just talking about a quantity of a gas with initial and final conditions, and it was the combination of boil Charles and Gala Sachs laws, where P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2 for initial and final conditions. And they were all equal to K, a constant, because we were talking about a fixed amount of a gas. And that constant has two parts to it. It has N, which is the number of moles, and something called R, the ideal or universal gas constant. But first we have to remember Avogadro. And remember that Avogadro was investigating the relationship between the volume of a gas and the number of particles or the number of moles present in a sample. And I couldn't do this without reminding you of what Avogadro looked like. And Avogadro's law um, states that what he found was that as the number of moles is doubled, the volume doubles. If you triple the number of moles in a gas sample, the volume triples, and so forth. So at constant temperature and pressure, sorry, we can say that the volume of a gas divided by the number of moles is equal to some constant. And here my constant is A, but usually we use K for constant. So again, showing this as a picture, if you had a confined sample of a gas, if this was the volume when there was one mole, this would be the volume when there were two moles, and this would be the volume when there's three moles. We can also remember that Avogadro's law tells us that when you have two samples of a gas, if they are at the same temperature and pressure, they have the same number of particles at the same volume. So again, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas that you have. So Avogadro's law, again, equal volumes of all gases if they are at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. And if we're talking about standard conditions of temperature and pressure, and standard temperature is zero degrees C, or 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is 1 atm, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters or torr, and it's also equivalent to 101.325 kilopascals. And again, that um, if we're talking about those conditions, one mole of any gas has the volume of 22.4 liters. So the ideal gas law, where P V over T is equal to a constant, and we remember that that constant has two components to it, N and R, you can actually plug in numbers here for um, standard temperature and pressure and 22.4 liters for the volume and calculate what that constant R is. And again, um, it depends really on which units that you're using for pressure and volume, temperature always has to be Kelvin. So the ideal gas law, PV over T equals NR, or uh, stated more simply, PV equals NRT. So the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT, and R is this so-called ideal gas constant, and I'm going to give it to you in two forms. I'm going to give it to you in liters per kilopascal per mole degree K or liter atmospheres per mole degree K. And for most of the uh, problems that we will solve, we will use the 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Um, in lab, we do it and we use this one, we use uh, liter kilopascal. So again, how do we get to this gas constant if we solve for R, which would be PV over NT, um, depending on which unit that we use for pressure, whether we use 1 atm or 760 um, millimeters or 
uh, 101.325 kilopascals, um, and then liters, and then one mole, and then uh, the Kelvin temperature, to, uh, 273 Kelvin, you can get either of these numbers. So that is all for now. I have some ideal gas law problem solving tutorials. I think they're called ideal gas law part one and ideal, ideal gas law part two. So this is Ms. Augustine signing off.